Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for April 7th of 2023. And um, if you are new here, please do, and you're here live, uh, please do join us here on chat if you'd like. We have some great people who like to assist me in answering questions, which I greatly appreciate. I um, have some phenomenal people that are always here. And then if you do have questions and you're here live, please do drop them in the questions tab so that I for sure find them. Um, yeah. Hey, John from Minnesota. Ah, Linda, join us from Southern California. Gosh, we're almost in springtime here in South Dakota. We are... Uh, we just had like uh, 30 inches of snow in the area. And so it's going to be a beautiful, bright green spring here. Hey, Christine from Oz. Happy fall to you. Um, Telford, UK. Some more Southern California people. Yay. Thank you all for joining us here live. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started where we... Um, we usually start is by just doing our three breaths to go into the heart. And for those of you who are experienced with going into the heart space, gosh, you can do it with a single breath. Um, you know, it's because it, the exercise is, is, is it's pretty easy once you really get yourself into the heart space and it's a lot easier to find your way back. It's kind of like an exercise that the more you do it, the easier it is to get there. So here we go. We're going to drop into the heart space. So simply closing your eyes, putting your attention to your heart. It's where we find our light. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth. And just breathing in that energy of the earth up through the feet. And into the heart. So you are just grounded and immersed with that energy of earth. And next it is connecting with you as creator, God, source, soul, however you see and say that. Breathing in that light that is always within you. Expanding. The third breath is simply you connecting heaven and earth. Breathing in the energy of the earth. Breathing in the energy of creation, of you, of soul and bringing them both together within you. So you are that conduit between earth and the energy of creation source, the I am. And again, it's just all concepts. It's really, again, just the simple, simple breath moves you into the heart space. And the reason we go into the heart space is, um, again, once you go into the heart, you're not influenced so much by the emotional field, outside energetics. Everything just becomes more calm and peaceful because you actually move the consciousness from the head into the heart. So anyway. All right. Um, a couple announcements before we jump to questions. Uh, let's see. I don't know. One of my announcements is I should probably shut off my phone here. Um, so let's see, we had, I mentioned that we were going to <clears throat> release the light want or the light bangles, which are these small bangles. Um, they are on the website. Now we're getting ready to send out an email here over the weekend and, um, and also start listing them on social media and stuff and such. But the light bangles there, they don't fit me, that's for sure. This is the larger of the two. We have them in extra small and small. Simply, they are the Wisdom Energetic, um, but they've kind of been made in this newer energy. So they're, they hold the energetics of the Wisdom Ring, but they're, gosh, there's a little more to them than, than, than that. I can't say exactly what that is. Um, you know, a lot of you have, um, I've, I've mentioned and, and a lot of you have been expecting some new energies and tools coming through Twisted Sage and we're not quite there yet or 
you know, probably my ability to anchor them in isn't quite there yet, but it is, it's, it's right here within our reach. It's very close to bringing in. And I kind of feel like these light bangles are just kind of touching on whatever this new energy is going to be. So the light bangles and they're, they're a $24 ring. So they're, they're a fairly inexpensive ring. Versatile can be used for everything. So anyway, on the website, light bangles, um, I just like to carry them in my pocket even, but they, again, they're versatile. Uh, let's see. What is the other thing? Uh, the other thing is, is that, um, we finished up the, um, soul alchemy class and since the, we have them all as recordings at twistedsage.vhx.tv. So twistedsage.vhx.tv is where you can find um, our, our paid meditations. Uh, we only have a couple of things up there right now. The light workers, which you can actually get, it's on YouTube. Um, we just charge for this because the platform charges and you can download it there as well. Um, then we have the soul alchemy class and soul alchemy class. When we were doing it live, it was 44. I just knocked it down to 22 bucks last night. It's, um, several hours. You get the light workers class with that. And then I think we did six classes in that soul alchemy. And, you know, the, the first couple of classes were just kind of a lot of mental stuff trying to get us into, you know, into the whole mindset, just bringing in concepts. But I tell you, the last three classes of that were pretty phenomenal. So basically, if, if you're having a lot of outside influence issues, and just, um, you know, as you're going through those dark nights of the soul, as we begin to step into the awakening process here, you guys, and, and I'm assuming everybody here is stepping into that process, of, of, of the awakening is basically of you becoming more aware and, and some of these things are, well, these things are all truly yours. They're, they're things that come up to be released. We get triggered. We're angry. We, um, you know, there's a lot of things cause it's a very individual process. So what, Basically, the Soul Alchemy class can assist, especially those last three classes in the Soul Alchemy class, hold a great space for us to start to release other old energies, whether they are soul aspects or old programs, beliefs, or whether they are things that are handed down through your ancestral lineage. Um, because we do one of the classes we're working with the ancestors where we bring them in as divine sovereign beings, masters in their own right. And we do that clearing and release for our entire family tree. Um, so it's pretty powerful. Um, anyway, that is now at 22 bucks instead of the 44. And let's see any other announcements. Um, yeah, we have some upcoming events. We will be in, I'll be in Cheyenne, Wyoming, actually, tonight, um, over this weekend, Easter weekend, where we're doing an event in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, then I will be next weekend, uh, the weekend of the 15th, 16th, we'll, I will be in um, Cincinnati, Ohio. So if you are in the Cincinnati, Ohio region, uh, please come check out Body, Mind, Spirit there. And you can find all of these on our website under uh, the events, upcoming events. And let's see. So yeah, if you just go to twistedsage.com and there on that homepage, um, there's a drop down where it shows upcoming events. Let's see, and not on the Twisted Sage shop page. Again, we have two different websites on there. They're, they're both tied together, but there's twistedsage.com where you'll find the events. And then there's the shop twistedsage.com where you find the products. So, which we're getting all of that one day, all combined into one easy to use platform. Um, so let's see, the other event is going to be in Brighton, Colorado at the end of the month. And then we haven't posted our May and June yet, which are starting to fill up. So, Let's see. I think that is all I have to bring up for new business. All right. We'll get to questions here. 
And again, thank you all for being here today live. Uh, John, thoughts on the EE system technology. So yeah, I just did um, um, a thing with online with Dr. Sandra. Uh, so, so Dr. Sandra, Sandra Rose Michaels, she makes um, a system called the EE systems. And it's, it's basically, it's a, it's an electronic technology and I really, truly don't know that much about her technology. Basically, um, some of my friends that have them, it's almost, it's like there's a black box about two feet by two feet. It's a black cube, but then on four sides, there is uh, a TV screen, a computer monitor. And it's like, there is these, it looks like, mm -hmm almost looks like static. There's colored bars and lines that go across there, but they, they are, they are emitting an, an energetic, a field. And gosh, there has been so much good luck with these units. They're, they're an expensive unit, especially even just for the home one, but they have centers all over the world where you can go to, um, where you can go pay to be there in those centers because uh, our, our good friend, Dr. Dream, he had a stroke and he went and saw Dr. Sandra and gosh, after his first session, everything was phenomenal. I mean, she talks a lot about some pretty, pretty amazing turnarounds that people have with that technology. Um, and there's a, a few people that have those cubes in their personal homes that use our Ascension pyramids with those. And it just, you know, of course, our tools harmonize and amplify and work together with whatever other energy that you use. So the, the EE system technology, you know, if, if you were drawn to it, I would certainly go check out one of the centers around you and just see how you feel about it. Cause you know, every one of these technologies and every one of the healing techniques that are out there, the tensor rings that we create, it is not every person is going to resonate and have the same experiences with those. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of feeling into it, going into the heart space, sitting with that concept or the picture of that, and just feeling into it and feeling if that's something that you're drawn to. Um, so that's a good place to start with any, anything. Well, let's see. Next question. Uh, let's see, Rachel, I find myself using the rings interchangeably without attention to what their original designations were. How far do they actually serve as whatever I intend? So yes, the rings. So the question is basically about the versatility of a ring. So like, let's, let's give a example, the Wi-Fi ring. The Wi-Fi ring is definitely not just for Wi-Fi. It is a field, um, you know, it was originally the golden fire, but I don't even know what the energetics in the Wi-Fi are now. They're just whatever's in that highest and best. They're kind of a culmination of, of a lot of the energies. So let me even backtrack here a little bit. Throughout the years, the past 13 years that we've been creating the tools, um, it's basically been certain frequencies. You know, we started out with the 144 megahertz, 177. You know, we, we moved through, we found like the standard TO2 Econ, which is the balance and harmony ring. Then the golden fire came along and all these new rings since, I mean, the chalice, the divine I am, the harmonizer, and now the wisdom ring. So really don't get too caught up in what those frequencies are, or what the names are. Basically whatever and and as you mentioned um you know you you find that you are just drawn to use whatever ring and that is truly the way that you want to do this is to intuit it to feel into it and if you don't feel like you're intuitive oh my goodness you are you got to just simply start to trust yourself but trust yourself from the heart space and not the head space and, you know, and that's really a way to begin to really feel the energies as well is to be in the heart space because that is where you can feel the energies more. You're out of the head. You're more open when you are in that sacred space of the heart. So how to determine really what ring is for what? 
don't even look at the name or the description. Just feel it. Just look at the rings that you have on your table or the tools and simply reach for and grab the one that draws you and use it for whatever applications. And again, going back to the Wi-Fi ring is that basically the Wi-Fi ring can be used with electromagnetics, with your Wi-Fi router. It can be used on your fuse panel, your electrical panel. It can be used with your water, your supplements, your food. A lot of people wear them as pendants, carried in your pocket, aches and pains, releasing things come up into your awareness simply grab that wi-fi ring be in the heart take a deep breath and just be like okay i am going to release whatever it is that came up that 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 anger or that internal emotion or that feeling of abandonment whatever it is take a deep breath blow it through the ring it is a great exercise so basically these fields are rather interchangeable for whatever it is that you wish to use them for so definitely um you know just just be open and and just trust yourself on what it is that you're drawn to do and you truly are an amazing intuitive being each and every one of us uh, Linda, can the Badar coil wands and rings be used on pregnant ladies? So, yes, any of these fields are phenomenal for pre-born, newborn, and, and those who are carrying uh, babies. It's um, because these fields are always working for whatever is in anybody's highest and greatest good as determined by their consciousness, their soul, their higher self, however you see that. But it is them that determines what is in their highest and best. So if you're using the wisdom wand, as you gave the example for somebody who's pregnant and you're wanding, not only is that working with the mother's field, but that is also independently and together working with that of the baby. Um, so yes, I totally encourage, en encourage you to, you know, no matter what state you're in pregnant, not pregnant, um, in pain, not in pain. It, uh, I, I kind of went down a, yeah, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking 30 things at once and probably shouldn't have been talking, but yeah. I need to go back into the heart. Basically, yeah, the, the tools are safe for everyone and everything. And my apologies if I pronounced your name wrong, Rachel, or if it's Rochelle. Um, I believe it's Rochelle. I have solar panels on the roof of a building that holds a two-inch golden fire generator that would definitely transform the EMF of the panels. Yes? Yes. So, um, and really where the, where the EMF is really, so the solar panels where they gather it, it's actually the, the transformer in that whole space for, so in an electrical system, that transformer is really what you want to have in the field because that transformer is in, in the, right there by the transformer and the batteries is, is where it will disharmonize where it will um you know turn that into a discordant field you know something that's just not harmonized so really the the transformer is the best place to have your your tool set and with the golden fire generator again with the tensor field generators they are working on everything that is free floating through the air you know, like um, Wi-Fi signals or cell phone towers, whatever it is that's free floating through the air. Now, when you do put your generator on top of your electrical device, then it is connecting in. So as long as your generator is right there within 18 inches of, of a wall socket or within five feet of your electrical panel, or within, I'd say about three feet of yeah transformer. That is um, absolutely perfect because then that generator is fully connecting in because the generator creates more of a sunshine effect. 
but when it is right close, it is connecting into that electrical system. So I would suggest having the generator within like three feet of that transformer for your um, solar panels, and then it will connect into that entire electrical grid. If you have it on the elect on the um, solar panels, it's going to harmonize that. But by the time it hits the transformer, the transformer will then unharmonize that. So having it with the transformer ensures that everything that exits is then harmonized. To put it shortly and easily. Uh, let's see. Linda, for someone that wears hearing aids, what tool is the best to help with the negative effects? So we ever since like the iPods and everything have came to be, people have always had concerns with the EMF um, and the Bluetooth and everything that come from iPods and the same with hearing aids. Now we did, we, we've tried a lot of things through the past and we actually made these little hooks style of thing as a prototype that you put on your ear and it would sit there um, and it would harmonize whatever is coming through. But, you know, through more realizations of what these tools are doing and how it affects Bluetooth, hearing aids, things like that, is, is that basically it is, they're not a very powerful field. Okay, here's concept. The tensor rings will harmonize whatever electromagnetic you put it on. So a phone creates a discordant field. So the rings harmonize that field with the human. We see that if you are out of alignment, if you're not grounded, connected, you're, you're just kind of, you know, you're, you're not, not consolidated. You're just kind of everywhere. Your energy bodies, your chakras, all of that, your emotional fields, everything. And if it's all kind of scattered everywhere and you're not in alignment, grounded, connected, you have anything that is then a discordant energy that comes into your field, you really feel it and it knocks you off more. So people who have severe sensitivities to electromagnetics, um, you know, the first step really is to do that work for your energy bodies, yourself, your consciousness, everything, your light, and bring yourself into center. And that's what we do with this Trinity breath of going into the heart space and becoming that column of light that is grounded and connected. Because when we do that, it aligns chakras, energy bodies, it brings everything together, you're grounded, you're connected. So truly, when you do the Trinity breath, and you're in that heart space, that is one way that you can then be that transformer for whatever comes in your field, including hearing aids, iPods, phones. I don't even need cell phone tabs or any of these on my phone because I can stand to where I am that harmonizer for these discordant fields because innately the human is our harmonious bioelectric being. Our heart has this field around us. Um, and so wearing any of the pendants, the tools, so that's it too. So you can just do this on your own by being grounded, connected, um, and that will ensure that hearing aids or iPods are not affecting you. You can also wear any of the, the tools, bracelets, pendants, things in your pocket, and that will help your field stay harmonized. And then those little energies that come in, whether it's any, anything, it doesn't have to be electromagnetic, any energies that are discordant, you then harmonize. You become that harmonizer for those fields. So don't go into fear over having any of your, let me, let me share a telephone call that came through yesterday, is, is that somebody has a lot of the tools but they were still having experiences with, um, with uh, EMFs. And so what we did was we had them realize that they were creating that, that they were in fear of their phone still. 
And when you are still in fear and you are a powerful creator and you're saying, okay, that damn thing is frying me, then that is what is allowed. You allow that. You create that allowing of that to discordant field to then affect you. These will totally clear the energetics of that phone. But so, so if you have that issue to where something is still affecting you and you have the tools, just stop, go into the heart space and just tell yourself that, hey, I am a powerful transformer of all energies. Release your fear of that device and everything starts to change. So with the hearing aids, simply know that you are a powerful, powerful being, that you are a bioelectromagnetic being, your heart is this powerful electromagnetic generator, and that you are a transformer of energies. Then you truly, truly are. And it's not mind over, well, it is kind of mind over matter. It is you as creator, um, oh, sorry, I actually kind of got to get off here early today. So I'm going to not go into such depth and detail about that. Um, but yeah, I could, I could feel you receiving that. Um, Christine, I have seven of the practitioner rings and hang them together as a column at the head of my bed. But if the rings are now carrying a lot of the higher fields, does that mean I can now split them up and use them more singularly around the house? So, you know, so the, the practitioner rings, um, you'll still feel that each of them has their own flavor. They each still carry their own energetics, but yet the energetics are kind of starting to meld together a lot more. I mean, there's not a huge difference between the harmony and the golden fire. And that's the way we were seeing it just a couple years ago, even. And then when the chalice energy came in, that went into all the tools. When the divine I am came in, that went into all the tools. But yet you can still feel a definite difference between the golden fire and the wisdom and the grounding ring, especially because the grounding ring doesn't really carry any of the other stuff. So between like the wisdom and the golden fire, there are people who definitely resonate more with the golden fire and those of us who definitely resonate more with the wisdom. And so like a golden fire ring, I don't even light the golden fire myself anymore. I mean, I've been bathed in this, bathed in that energy for years and I hold that field it has become a part of my field, but I really don't like the golden fire personally. And that is very much an individual personal thing because I love the wisdom fields. And um, so there's still going to be an attraction to what energies and again, to know what energy that is, go into the heart space and just feel into it. And you will feel which of those energies you're more aligned with. Um, but yes, totally. I would, I would, Christine, I would totally sit with those rings and I would spread them around the house and I would just send them all around you perhaps, or pick up one at a time or look at one at one at a time and just feel into it which one really makes you feel better which one it, you you are intuiting is better for your sleep state um you know begin to trust your intuition and your guidance with these tools uh and then christine as an example if using a practitioner sized golden fire ring would place in a betar coil inside shift the energetics of the whole ring higher yes um definitely if you have any ring any practitioner ring let's say you even have one from slim sperling that he made originally you know like 15 years ago 20 years ago um you can simply take any of the any of the like the wisdom rings the beta coil is the wisdom ring because the wisdom rings are really shifting these these tools so if you take the beta coil and you sit it inside of any practitioner ring it will begin to shift that energy and those rings if you intend it to those practitioner rings will then hold that energy for you permanently um so yeah using the wisdom rings or the beta coils or the wisdom wands, whatever it is, wisdom energetic will shift the energy of other rings when you place it inside of it. Well, let's see another question with the generator on the 
Solark solar regulator. Oh, the solar panel um, regulator. Will it still have a beneficial effect on the energies of the whole area? Um, we have buildings and garden within three feet of, 300 feet of each other. So yes, the golden fire generator, if you set it on that, that regulator for your solar panels, um, yes, no matter where you put that golden fire generator, it is going to expand a mile and a quarter out to a mile and a half out in every direction because it covers about a two and a half to two and three quarter mile area where it is working with electromagnetics, dense consciousness, all of that. It's again, just that, that the most potent part of that is, is really right within the immediate field of the generator is where it's more like a ring, where it's more potent um, and potent would be the word to say where when it is out here, this generator, it is still doing everything for all that energy that's free floating through the air, including, you know, dense thoughts, consciousness, things like that. Um, the soul arc is a converter. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so, um, and just for a little bit more depth to the question, the converter is in its own building, a hundred feet from the panels. Um, so, you know, if, if, um, so the concern was too, is that having that generator right there by your desk. Now, um, when you're working with the electrical system, you know, the whole electrical system that flows through your, your home, the wires and the, the wires only produce about a 12 inch non-beneficial discordant field, the wires that are in the walls your electrical sockets and, and light switches and, and, and such about 18 inches and your electrical panel, your fuse panel, or your electrical meter. If you're on grid, those ones have about a five and a half foot sphere of influence. But again, that's in a high amp, um, and 120 volt 220 volt system. So using the 12 volt system, it's not going to be as great of a field and it's not going to be as a powerfully discordant field if you're using like a 12 or a 48 volt system. Um, so really I feel that you could just keep your golden fire generator there on your desk unless, you know, you are, have concerns with that electrical system where you're sleeping next to a, a breaker box or right next to a, a plug in, that you can't get more than 18 inches away from, you know, then maybe I would suggest getting our cheapest ring, which is the, you know, these new light bangles or a Wi-Fi ring or whatever it is. If you have another ring laying around, you can put that ring on that converter for, for your solar electrical panel um, or the light ring. And it will do, and it will take care of it. Um, you know, as I don't want to try to sell you another tool, if you already have something or if you can utilize your generator. Um, but if you, you know, again, just a single ring on there will definitely take care of, of that electrical system. Um, and just going back to chat here, uh, Linda Lowell, where do we find this interview? Oh uh, gosh. If you, if you are on our newsletter, we sent out our newsletter here this last week um, about that interview. I don't know where you find that interview at. Um, if you don't get the newsletter and you still need to, then just send us an email and we can send you that link. And I'm not sure about this interview with the EE systems and the one that I did, if it is... Um, a paid thing or not. I really don't know. I know that at the time it was free. Um, hey, Nancy. Hey, Samson. Um, let's see. And uh, just going over here, just reading through everything here. Oh, let's see, Samson, could you talk about the energies of the triquatra? Was working with it in the Gaia sphere last week in a river 
and felt like body, mind, and spirit was really flowing. Um, the triquatra, the I'm assuming you're talking about the halo with the, the practitioner size three rings together. Um, you know, gosh, just working that Gaia sphere to me is amazing. And really, again, we go back to the whole concept of, of using your intuition and, and trusting your guidance with it on using these tools and putting them together in different ways and experimenting and playing because it is amazing what what we come up with when we start to work with tools and multiple tools together and how their fields co-create something more than what those two together were creating um so i you know i don't really know what a lot of these combinations are doing with each other um you know and i've played with a lot of the combinations but definitely not all um so gosh i don't know what to do i i don't know what to say for any kind of a reading or details on on how those tools were interacting with each other um but I'm very happy to hear that you had a great experience with them. Um, and um, let's see. Oh yeah, somebody, uh, there was, I was looking through my emails. I was trying to find another, another question here. Um, and the question was if the wisdom field is anchored into the divine I am activator pendant. So the divine I am activator pendant was a pretty intense one in the beginning. And what I've told people is, is that you can smooth this energy out. Um, you just simply ask it to harmonize with you. And because this pendant will get in and it will just do the work. It is a powerful pendant, but I, I don't, like that field as much anymore because you know i've kind of gone through and done that work that it can do for me so i simply have asked mine to to just step to to shift to bring to come into more harmony and balance with me and again what we were talking about earlier is using any of the wisdom tools you can use your wisdom wand a wisdom ring and simply utilize it with this divine i am activator pendant wanded or sit it in that ring or on your bait coil and simply ask it to shift the energies to be in the highest and best for you um and again you don't have to be mental about it and of course you should be in the heart space when you do that and your soul understands what it is that you're saying your consciousness so you don't have to get into the details of the words you can be in the heart space your soul knows what you want to do. You can just hold it. And it's that simple. And trust that. It is that simple. Um, and simplicity is totally the key when um, working with those. And let's see. Gosh, and I think that's all the questions that I had through um, through email here. Let's see. Oh, and this was an interesting thing. Somebody would ask me to share on the scale of consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins, the Badar coil with the tensor ring rates over 959,000 and the tensor ring is over 900,000 alone. This is a truly remarkable product with 11 of the 16 cosmic energies that can be directed to manifest great things. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. Well, thank you for, for sharing that info. Um, and let's see, I'm going to run because I need to get to a fruit truck that is bringing a pallet of strawberries from Florida and we're here in South Dakota. So I got to meet them in our city here in 15 minutes, um, to get strawberries that I'm going to share with everybody. Well, everybody at our studio that is so thank you guys all again uh thank all of you for being here live and if you are watching on youtube you're welcome to subscribe to our newsletter at twistedsage.com and then you get notifications of when we have our live events and again if you are in any of the regions that we talked about in the beginning here um 
for our events, please come and we are doing free sessions with the Ascension Pyramids. So, all right. Thank you all for being here and we will see you next time. And happy Easter and happy spring and happy fall and happy everything wherever you are. It's, um, yeah, we're stepping into some beautiful new energies, if you allow. <laughs>